Akutsu Masatora is a demon sent to the human realm to infiltrate a high school in Japan on a sole mission to find candidates from Earth to help his kingdom, aka Hell, in the fight against the Angels of Heaven, their eternal enemies. His journey to Earth was a rough one indeed, but eventually, he managed to get himself transferred into the high school to begin his mission. Akutsu's short life on Earth takes a very wild turn after he runs into another celestial being unknowingly in the same class he's in. Stick around to find out the chain of events that transpired between both of them as they carry out their separate missions in the same space as natural enemies. In the opening scene, Akutsu narrates the butterflies he felt in his tummy the first time his eyes met the tiny, beautiful, and cute Amani Lily. Earlier that day, before Akutsu was introduced as a new transfer student in the school, rumors were flying all around about the kind of guy that was joining them that day. While some of the girls hoped Akutsu to be a good-looking dude with a nice physique, most guys were just wondering the type of person he was going to be seeing as he transferred to their school at a very odd time of the year in May. While the ruckus and anticipation build up in the classrooms, the head teacher of the class is seen behind the entrance with the new guy, Akutsu. He gives him a little briefing on what to expect before taking into the little sea of demons. Once he's done, the teacher walks into the classroom, leaving Akutsu outside, and pre-introduces Akutsu Masatora to everybody. Akutsu, upon hearing his name, yanks the door open and strides into the classroom with pride. As soon as everyone sets their eyes on poor Akutsu, their eyes open wide with both shock, disgust, and pity as nobody can stop checking out Akutsu's poorly shaped hairline. At the time, no one, not even the teacher, knew that Akutsu was wearing a wig on his real hair, just to garner sympathy from his colleagues. The teacher even goes as far as telling the class the sob story Akutsu told him earlier. It is a story about Akutsu not liking a shaved head when he was younger, and him using his father's hair removal cream, which he mistook for a hair growth shampoo on his hair, which made it as bald as it appeared to them. The teacher seemed to understand Akutsu's plight seeing as he was also bald as well. If only he'd known the evil intentions behind Akutsu's appearance. Anyway, Akutsu's plan works very well for him short term, and after getting the necessary pity he needs from his teacher and colleagues, he finally says hi to his new colleagues and tells them all about his hobbies and his favorite word, which is visiting pharmacies and follicles respectively. At this point, everybody begged him to live so he could be better someday. Akutsu finishes his pity speech and successfully fools everybody in front of him. After his speech, the entire class ruptures in applause with some people encouraging him to press on and live his life in hope and happiness. In the meantime, Akutsu closes his eyes and smirks over how stupid humans can be as he finds it way too easy to fool them. Just then, the teacher finds a hair follicle coming out of Akutsu's supposed hair. He grabs the follicle without question and accidentally yanks the wig off Akutsu's natural hair exposing his real hair to the entire class. At that instant, Akutsu gets exposed for the fraud he is, and this pisses off the teacher so much that he clenches his fist, ready to take down the fraud that infiltrated his class. In a bid to save his life, Akutsu pulls out some of his hair and tells the teacher that he shed some of his old cells. He then makes a very sad performance in front of everyone, which eventually ends in his favor. After their drama, the teacher calms down and tells everyone to be nice to him. He then shows Akutsu his seat at the back and urges him to go sit there. Akutsu walks slowly and pridefully to his seat, but on his way there, he stops to look at the cutie of the class, Amane Lily. At the time, Akutsu appeared to be so innocent that he fell in love with Lily at first sight. After another dramatic display in front of the class, Akutsu finally finds his way to his seat. He sits down there and stares at Lily throughout the class while imagining his life with her as his girlfriend. Akutsu's imagination runs so wild that he imagines his first bed thingy with her. Thankfully, he's able to snap himself back to reality as he wonders the right things to say to the beautiful girl. He considers asking her out of the blue, but then again, he gets the feeling that he may come off as too creepy for her. So, he settles back in his seat and thinks of another strategy. While he's at it, the creep of the class, Hirota, approaches Lily to ask her out for the umpteenth time in a row. He sticks to the same cringy strategy of coming up with weird pickup lines, hoping to impress the lovely Lily-chan. To nobody's surprise, his strategy fails woefully just like the other times, and Lily rejects him blatantly. Thankfully, his friend Yuya is there to save his broken heart from being ripped out of his heart. Yuya also stops by to introduce himself and become friends with Akutsu. After getting acquainted with each other, Akutsu asks after the creep in front of him, and Yuya tells him about the horn dog, Hirota, who goes around asking every girl he's interested in out only to get rejected by them. For now, 
He's hooked on Lily and can't seem to get off her back. Hirota quits asking Lily out for the day and joins his buddy, Yuya, alongside Akutsu, outside class to continue chit-chatting about being friends and the likes. Amid their discussion, Akutsu asks after the damsel he's interested in, Lily hoping to find some strange news about her. To his surprise, Yuya introduces Lily as a Kikokushiju type lady and this makes Akutsu much more interested in her. Around that time, Akutsu takes one last look at Lily and compliments her tiny body with a smart brain and personality. He daydreams again and spews some more nonsense about himself and Lily. Hirota catches on to this and warns Akutsu about Lily's tendencies to always reject guys she doesn't find attractive. He recounts his several rejections from Lily and prepares himself to confess to her again one more time. This time, Yuya tries his best to stop his friend from making the same mistake the sixth time. While he's at it, Akutsu smirks over finding the right candidate for his hell mission and gets down to trying out his charm on the seemingly innocent Amani Lily. On his way back from school, during his strategy meeting, Akutsu accidentally bumps into Lily who is coming out of an alleyway and apologizes for being clumsy. After gathering his thoughts, he suddenly gets the thought to riz up Lily and fumbles woefully at it. As he embarrasses himself in front of the beautiful Lily, Akutsu extends his hand to shake Lily's and notices the tear on one of her sleeves. He asks her about it but then Lily tells him not to worry about the tear in her sleeves. To change the subject, Lily cutely asks him out for a coffee date, and Akutsu humbly accepts her offer. On their way there, both of them talk about their overseas parents with Akutsu lying to Lily about him doing his chores, despite both his parents staying overseas. Lily, who doesn't seem to believe him, gets frisky and crosses the road carelessly without noticing the signs on the traffic light. At that time, a fast-moving truck was speeding towards her with the risk of hitting her. Akutsu, who was standing behind her, springs into action and unintentionally activates his demon powers to stop the car and catch Lily just moments before she's hit by the truck. After it all happens, Lily catches a glimpse of Akutsu's true form and behaves almost as if she doesn't understand or know what he truly is. Thinking we wouldn't know, Lily smirks, like she just caught her prey and keeps up the act of being the saint. When people started gathering around them, she held Akutsu and took to the streets to hide somewhere safe. After getting to a safe place, Lily sits Akutsu down and offers him some cold cloth to wipe his head. Then she sits near him on the bench, thanks him for saving her back there, and apologizes for being a klutz back on the road. In the end, she asks the big question and tries to make Akutsu tell her who or what he truly is. She calls him some otherworldly creature and humbly asks Akutsu to be truthful with her. Akutsu dies inside and thinks hard about what he's to do at the moment. Before saying anything, he looks at Lily another time and realizes that she wasn't reacting too negatively to him being something else. So, he decides to tell her the entire truth about himself, hoping to charm her with his demonic form. To do this, he gets up and transforms part of his body into his true demon form. Then, he narrates the danger Hell is to the innocent-looking Lily, and tells her about his companions not taking the news of the war seriously. He also lets Lily know about his mission to find a candidate to come, encourages his colleagues to take the fight seriously, and asks if the wondrous Amain Lily could help him out with his mission. Lily, after hearing everything Akutsu had to say, still keeps her act up and lets Akutsu know that it's all too sudden and that he shouldn't expect an answer from her too quickly. Akutsu tells her to think about things and that he can give her the necessary time she needs to make it work. As he waits for something positive to come out of Lily's mouth, Akutsu gets the shock of his life when Lily changes her countenance and complains a little about his kind behavior towards her. Akutsu gets a little confused and asks for some clarity on her matter. Lily gets up and keeps up the act one more time and asks Akutsu if he truly wants to proceed on her matter. Atsuku reassures her that she'll be fine under his wing if she eventually agrees to be his partner. When she's had enough, Lily reveals her true nature as an angel from the heavens and takes out her purple chains before wrapping them around the foolish demon Akutsu. Akutsu still failed to recognize the type of monster Lily truly was, until she showed him her wings. Shocked, Akutsu still asks for some clarity on her and struggles to get himself out of her chains. Lily, however, let him know that the chains binding him were unremovable, so he shouldn't try removing them. After watching him struggle relentlessly to remove the chains, Lily walks up to him, bends down, and tells him the truth behind the torn marks on her hand. She tells him she was fighting another demon just like him in that alleyway before exorcising him. She accidentally bumped into him immediately after the fight and got acquainted with him ever since. She contemplates exercising him, but then again, Lily seems to think of using Akutsu to her advantage rather than just taking him down. Akutsu, who's pissed off, breaks himself off his chains from his anger and attacks Lily blindly. Lily dodges his attacks and uses about 50% of her abilities to kick the powerless demon to the ground. 
Then, she wraps him with a stronger chain this time and slams him into the ground. Then, while he's weak, she summons her death scythe and points it at him to exorcise him. Before doing that, however, she makes him a deal to divulge all of Hell's secrets to her in exchange for getting his life spared. Akutsu chooses death over betrayal and waits for his time to come. To his surprise, however, Lily stops midway and decides to turn him into her dog. She creates a pink collar and teases him a little bit before asking him to join her team to hunt demons and teach them hard lessons about life. Akutsu considers taking the other way out, but then again, Lily threatens to destroy his social life if he doesn't cooperate. With this, Akutsu joins her team and humbly asks her to free him from the chains. Before she does that, however, Lily forces the pink collar on his neck and uses magic to seal the collar to his neck. With this, Akutsu becomes physically unable to return to hell as he's now Lily's humble servant. After getting the shock collar on his neck, Akutsu chastises Lily for trying to take advantage of him and his vulnerability. Lily, who doesn't care much about his feelings, gives Akutsu a smug look and tells him his new destiny in life which is to help her hunt down his demon colleagues. On hearing this, Akutsu frowns at Lily's request and lets her know that he will never succumb to her wishes, even if it means losing his life to the shock collar. At this point, Lily gets a little surprised to notice the kinship between demons. Akutsu explains the demonic social norms and mentions just how hard it is for demons to betray the people that's helped them before in life. Akutsu stops to check up on the person he's talking to, only to find Lily playing with her hair nonchalantly. This pisses Akutsu so much that he promises never to take part in such a betrayal. Trail. With that, he places his hands on his neck and tries to remove the collar all by himself. Sadly for him, this was impossible, and Lily lets him know about the secret of the collar. She lets him know that the collar can only be opened by her, so he shouldn't bother forcing it open by himself. To make things worse for the poor demon, Lily tells him that the power in the collar acts is much more powerful than that of a mere demon. Plus, if he tries to escape, the collar will act as a GPS beacon and ping his exact location all over the map so she can track him wherever he thinks of escaping. To further demonstrate the qualities of the collar, Lily performs some sort of movement with her hand, which activates the hidden feature in the collar. This hidden feature causes Lily to gain access to Akutsu's motor sensors and manipulate them as she sees fit. She uses the said power to raise Akutsu's hands against his own will, just so he won't have a choice but to accept her request. Akutsu still considers opposing her, but in the end, his body gains a mind of its own. Suddenly, Akutsu's body starts paying its respects to its new master, Lily. In just a few seconds, Akutsu finds himself bowing to Lily and offering his undying loyalty and service to Lily. Despite the opposition from the mind, Akutsu's body still asks Lily to tell it what she wanted at the time so he can go get the stuff for her. Lily tells him she's thirsty, and Akutsu's body immediately gets up and walks towards the vending machine to get her four different sports drinks to give her body the hydration it needs. Upon his return, Lily, who was playing tic-tac-toe at the time, gets up and looks around his body before asking him for the bottles. Akutsu apologizes for not having a bag on him at the time, and impresses Lily by unbuttoning his shirt and showcasing the four bottles of drinks that he kept there. At this point, Lily is pretty pissed at his weirdness. She throws down a few drinks at Akutsu, and then settles down to take one of the drinks he bought for her. Lily has him make a royal seat for her to sit on. When he's done, she takes her seat and gets a little remorseful for maltreating her new slave. To make it up to him, she asks him to tell her one of his deepest wishes so she can grant it to him. To her surprise, Akutsu turns his back on her, gets on all four of his limbs, and showcases his butt to her for a proper spanking. Meanwhile, Akutsu's head is ringing with curses and insults at his body for abandoning its original mind to serve that of an angel. As for Lily, she asks him one more time to make sure he knows what to do. This time, Akutsu changes his mind and tells Lily to step on his butt with her fine legs. Lily smirks like she always does and raises her legs so she can place them on Akutsu's butt and step on them like he'd asked her to do. Halfway there, she starts getting second thoughts about actually doing what the doofus wished. Apparently, she thinks she's about to make an irreversible mistake and gets very hesitant about doing it. Nevertheless, she still goes through with it seeing as he'd asked for it, just as she's about to touch his butt with her legs. The park's funky security guy catches them doing the thing and blows his whistle while running towards them to help them out so he can join them and play with them later on. Akutsu gets a little flustered over the weirdo rushing over to them to play, but then again, he turns around to see what Lily, his master, has to say about the matter, and unfortunately finds her running for dear life, almost as if she'd seen a ghost or something. Akutsu runs after her and ends up getting pursued by the tenacious security guard. Eventually, they all get to a random alleyway around town to hide in. There, they catch their breath and return to their conversation, 
before the bullying and security man interrupts them. Lily asks Akutsu if he's going to cooperate with her work one last time, and Akutsu keeps quiet. Lily takes his quietness as a no, and promises to punish him the next time they meet. Akutsu asks her to exorcise him, so they can get their little charade over with and continue doing their thing. However, Lily tells him not to think he's getting off the hook that easily. She has a plan brewing and she needs someone like Akutsu on her side to implement it. She keeps most of her plan to herself, and then bends down to hear his answer again. This time, she threatens to expose some of the embarrassing pictures she took of him online and destroy his online social presence. Akutsu thinks on his feet and finally comes up with a plan that works. He suggests helping her identify demons that are close to them so she can do her dirty work. Bro's basically opting in to be a snitch to his people. Lily works well with this, but then again, she threatens to deal with him badly if he ever thinks of going behind her back and doing what he's not supposed to do. Akutsu promises to be a good boy so Lily doesn't have to worry about him. From then, henceforth, Lily makes Akutsu her official servant and promises to reform him to be a true righteous and honest man while he serves her. Akutsu gets a little disappointed at the offer and lets his heart out. Lily reasons with his logic and comes up with another perverse reward of hugging Akutsu after a job well done. Akutsu reacts weirdly to this, and Lily lets him know that he doesn't sit well with it. Lily postpones the reward decisions for later and decides to pursue a more pressing matter. However, just as they're about to discuss their next big thing, the man chassing them earlier catches up to them and continues pursuing them through the alleyway. Eventually, both of them split ways, and Akutsu gets home very late at night. On getting to his room, he touches his neck while complaining about his bad day and is surprised to notice the collar missing. He gets a little shocked at this and wonders about the implications of the disappearance. Just then, he receives a load of text from Lily, telling him about the new tattoo on his neck and tells him that's what the collar transforms into after it disappears. She also lets him know not to think the collar was absent, as he thought, and informs him that the tattoo is now in his mind. Akutsu thinks of several things that could go wrong with his new reality, and promises to cause her damage before she does so to him. Meanwhile, Lily finishes relaying her daily report to her superiors. She lies about encountering Akutsu, and tells them she only caught one of the demons and exercised it back to hell. When she's done with the call, she gets to her window and promises herself to make heaven regret what they did to her when she was younger. To that end, she's going to make sure that Akutsu fails his mission. Around that time, Akutsu also promises to make sure Lily fails in all her endeavors. For a little backstory, a flashback is shown to the moments Akutsu was summoned to the demon's office for his next assignment. That day, the Secretary of Hell brought him to her office and briefed him on his new mission, which was to infiltrate the human realm to find candidates that would encourage their own troops to fight before they get taken down by the Angels of Heaven. Once Akutsu gets the memo, the Secretary takes him to a secret room and shows him images of angels bullying poor demons all around the streets of Earth. After showing Akutsu the horrible things the demons have done to their poor demons, she goes on a rave about how dangerous and deary the situation is and urges Akutsu, who's Hell's only hope at that point, to carry on his mission and make sure he completes it in Dewey time. Akutsu accepts his new mission and accepts the prosthetic scalp from the secretary as his gift. He asks her what he's to do with such an item, and the lady tells him to wear it when going to see the humans, so he can garner sympathy from them all. The flashback ends at that point, and Akutsu is seen brushing his teeth while checking out the weird tattoo on his neck. He wanders to his living room and finds a very weird show on TV called Lovey Dovey Married Couple. This is a show that allows the host to interview a married couple so they can divulge the conditions that made them consider marriage in the first place. Akutsu gets all the advice he needs from the married couples that were interviewed on TV and gets his arse down to school looking shiny as hell. His two friends, Hirota and Yuya, spot him looking dazzling and walk over to ask him about his secret, while Akutsu tries to mesmerize them. Lily shows up looking unusual as well. Before turning to see Lily, Akutsu remembers some of the pointers he saw on the show and also recounts just how much time he put into looking dazzling so Lily could fall in love with him. He turns back and is shocked to see Lily shining just like him. Mission failed. Akutsu gets at a loss for words, but then manages to say hi to her. Lily notices the shakiness in his voice and smirks about it. Apparently, she too had watched the same TV show Akutsu watched and had also spent the entire night tuning her hair and tweaking her body just to appear gleam to her rival, Akutsu. Lily also plans to make Akutsu fall in love with her so he can be her servant for life. Just when she didn't expect it, Lily notices Akutsu's shiny body and also falls in love with it as well. So, 
both Akutsu and Lily begin crushing over each other in a rave of their innate urge to overcome the other. Just then, they realize that the other must have watched the TV show from the previous night. Throughout that day in school, both Akutsu and Lily made sure to do cute things to charm each other. The battle was great as both opponents were pretty evenly matched. After school, the teacher asks Lily to take a bunch of papers to the staff room for him. Lily feels the books and realizes that it'll get too heavy for her. So, she asks Akutsu for help and squeezes his sleeves just to charm him into liking her. Akutsu feels the effect of her cuteness, but for only a while he mans up and showcases his huge arm muscles, before carrying the papers to the staff room with him. From then on, life becomes a competition for both parties, as they go at each other relentlessly. During one of their last periods, Lily gets called by the teacher to write some stuff on the board. She does so flawlessly, and targets Akutsu on her way back to her seat. A few meters away from her seat, she trips and falls on Akutsu's chest right in front of the class. Akutsu struggles to keep up with his third leg intact as he feels Lily's soft behubais touching his body. Thankfully, the teacher intervenes and throws them out of class. A few days later, Lily is seen standing in front of a building waiting for Akutsu to accompany her on her outing, so he can be her demon beacon, only for her to be greeted by a bunch of creeps from nowhere. Lily turns back and finds the creeps trying to manipulate her, before letting them get the upper hand, she puts on her cute girl act and politely tells them she's waiting for her friend to come to get her somewhere. The two guys instantly get bamboozled by her cuteness and ask her out, right there. Yep, they're paidos. Anyway, Lily soon finds out how down bad they are for her, and quickly thinks of another way to get the creeps off her back. Just then, her knight in a shining suit, Akutsu, shows up and tells the guys to quit moaning and fawning over a tiny little girl. The creeps look back to check if the person is strong enough to confront them while doing their business. To their surprise, they find Akutsu to be a strong-looking dude with good genetics. Akutsu puts on a manly display and nudges the pedos in the right direction to get a catch like Lily in their bosoms. He tells them to use force in their approach just so Lily is obliged to do their bidding. Thankfully, none of the creeps seem to understand what Akutsu was talking about. So, amid the confusion, Lily sneaks out and gets to Akutsu's back. She picks her life-size toy and hits it on Akutsu's head to stop him from yapping on and on about tactics to catch a beauty like her. The two creeps find Lily to be scarier than they'd imagined, so they bail out in time before Lily smashes their head. On their way to Lily's outing location, Akutsu keeps on yapping about the toy she slammed on his head and then stops to observe something in her dress. Lily, who was already getting a little embarrassed about Akutsu's curious face, asked him why he kept staring at her like that. Akutsu continues staring at Lily's surprising choice of clothing for the day, and notices the creases and edges on each weave of the fabric. Eventually, Lily gets visibly embarrassed by his stares and asks him to cut it out. When he doesn't stop, she calls him a pervert, which resonates pretty badly for someone like Akutsu. Akutsu suddenly snaps out of his absurd gaze and tells Lily how fluffy and nice she looks whenever she dresses up like that to class. Lily stops him midway and holds him up at the throat, threatening him never to make such comments about her appearance ever again, or else she's going to constantly harass him with the collar around his neck on their next day in school. Akutus thinks of several things that can go wrong with her manipulating his body, so he promises never to tease her about her appearance ever again. With this, Lily gets back up and gets a move on to do her thing. Akutsu gathers his thoughts and realizes that he's currently forced to do her bidding, whether he likes it or not. With this, he asks her about their new mission, and Lily shows him a wanted poster of a vicious dog that attacks majorly women. She suspects the dog to be possessed by one of Akutsu's dudes and wants him to help her find the creep. She shows him a map of the city and asks Akutsu to tell her his range of detecting the demons. From what Akutsu told her, it seemed like Akutsu could only detect weak signaled demons if he was near them. This doesn't sit well with Lily, as she thinks of him as useless to her cause at that point. In a bid to defend himself, Akutsu clenches his fists and speaks up for himself. Just then, he feels something awry in the air and notices some demon vibe lurking nearby. Lily notices the change in his countenance and asks him about him. Akutsu lies, tells her not to worry too much about such a thing, and then presses on with Lily to get somewhere else. Over the next couple of scenes, Lily and Akutsu check out most of the buildings in that part of the city, only to find nothing out of the ordinary there. After hours of searching, Lily takes Akutsu to the nearest cafe to get some lunch. There, she orders a big burger and downs everything in one sitting. Akutsu notices this and warns her to reduce her excessive eating so she doesn't become a fatso in due time. Lily gets very pissed at Akutsu and strangles him softly for insulting his savior. Akutsu, on the other hand, 
gets the same weird vibe he got earlier, and changes his mood to a more serious one. Lily also notices this, and asks Akutsu what the issue is. Akutsu tells her about the demon he's been sensing near them, and this alerts Lily to also get a little curious. They searched around their seat for the suspected demon, and were shocked at what they found. Just when they thought they'd seen it all, Akutsu spots Hirota hitting his head on the window pane just outside their seat as he complains about Akutsu and Lily going on a date when he couldn't do the same with Lily. Apparently, Hirota was super jealous of seeing both of them together in a cafe and couldn't stand to get his feelings hurt instead. Akutsu and Lily feel a little pity for him and invite him into the house. After he's settled, they explain everything to him and calm him down. After treating his forehead wound, Hirota tells Akutsu to trust him well enough next time to give him a tour of the place. Akutsu keeps his cool and tries to pacify him. Hirota then confesses to seeing them around town a while ago and following them till they get to that space. Akutsu asks him why he didn't stop to say hi and tag along with them. Hirota's face goes red, and he tells them that he was hanging out with someone at the time. Speaking of the devil, the person Hirota was talking about shows up at the cafe to check up on her date. She finds him sitting with Akutsu and Lily, and calls him out for sneaking behind her back and coming over to the cafe to see his friends. Hirota recognizes his date as Yuka, and apologizes for leaving her just to spend some time with these freaks near her. Hirota felt the need to introduce his people, so he got down to it, and introduced Lily to his date. Yuka sees Lily's stature and calls her shrimp right in front of everybody. Lily's world comes crashing down when she hears herself being likened to a shrimp. Unable to say something else, Yuka goes on to run her rude mouth on and on, speaking terrible things to Lily, and even going as far as insulting the grade she was in. By the time she's done talking, Lily's insides are already boiling with anger and resentment towards Yuka. Still, she keeps her cool and acts maturely by shaking hands with her and doing her thing. Hirota introduces Akutsu to Yuka, who just says hi. Moving on, Yuka calls herself Hirota's girlfriend, and waits for the reactions from Lily and Akutsu. To bite Yuka where it hurts, Lily exposes Hirota's secret to Yuka, and reminds Hirota just how much he's asked her out before then. Breaks Yuka's confidence in her choice of men, and she drags her supposed boyfriend by the ears before taking him outside. Akutsu lets her know that she was being petty, but then again, Lily is just glad to finally give Yuka a taste of her own medicine. She then notices her servant being quiet, and asks him about it. Akutsu, on the other hand, begins to wonder about the weird sensation he felt previously. Lily speaks up and calls it all a day before heading out. Akutsu remains in his seat and fails to see the demon Miasma appear behind the window pane outside the cafe he just had lunch in. Eventually, he gets up and moves on to the attendant to settle the bill. To his surprise, he finds out Lily already got it handled like a man. Akutsu gets home that night and dreams about facing another one of his kind as Lily's ally. He wakes up before anything happens in the dream, and realizes that it's morning already. Without fail, he gets up from his bed and rushes to school to avoid getting there late. Right before their first period begins, Akutsu is forced to witness the silent feeling of disdain and disgust between Lily and Yuka. He listens to them pretending to be friends, just to get closer to each other and spite the other when the time comes. You know what's worse? He can do shit about it at all. Our boy wouldn't want to be forced to clean his butt with his bare hands now, would he? Well, thankfully, he didn't have to endure the pain for long, as the two ladies shortly parted ways and left for their separate classes. During lunch break, Akutsu takes a breather from being Lily's guard dog and rests on the roof of the school to think about his life on Earth so far. Shortly, his friends Yuya and Hirata show up under the same roof to check up on their buddy who is feeling pretty down. Akutsu keeps quiet and thinks about a suitable lie to tell them to throw them off his scent. He suddenly thinks of one and tells them that he's worried about an old woman showing up in his dream now and then. Hirota and Yuya misinterpret Akutsu's words and laugh at him, for falling in love with an old woman. Hirota spells out his mind and tells Akutsu that he thought he would be dreaming about someone younger like Lily. With this, Hirota suddenly realizes that he and Akutsu have been crush buddies for a while now. He admits to never going out with anyone before and tries to give Akutsu some advice. Akutsu gets a little curious and asks him about Yuka, but then again, Hirota tells him she's just his childhood friend. He also mentions just how badly Yuka used to treat him around other girls, and tells Akutsu just how tired he is of her. After yapping off again, Akutsu receives a text from his master telling him to come meet her so they can go demon hunting. Akutsu gives her an excuse and tells her about his stomach ache. Lily gives him the day off and tries searching for the demons by herself. After doing that and finding nothing of importance, 
She settles down on an outdoor bench to cool off. Suddenly, she gets visited by Yuka, her new frenemy who sits by her and forces Lily to talk about themselves. Soon she asks Lily to hang out with her somewhere else, and Lily, who's pretty confused over Yuka's schemes, decides to play along and follow her to the clothing store to shop for some clothes. While she's at it, she sends a text to Akutsu and is then interrupted by Yuka who gives her some oversized clothes to wear. Lily wears them and looks very weird. This makes Yuka laugh so hard that she makes Lily appear embarrassed. Lily takes the L and gets Yuka some clothes as well. Yuka takes a look at the clothes and asks Lily some questions that get her insulted for being slim. Lily makes sure to hurt her so badly that she has no choice but to wear it. As for the rest of their date, both ladies fought a silent battle with each other which eventually ended with no victor. After doing some more shopping, Yuka decided to take Lily out to the photo booth so she could get her photo taken and then mess it up to embarrass her more. However, upon getting there, Yuka realized how cute and impractical Lily was, and thought it to be unnecessary to spite her again. After their photo booth session, Yuka takes Lily out to a cafe nearby. There, the duo talk and chat about what to do with the photos. Yuka finds herself liking Lily more, and quickly forgets about their temporary battle. In the end, the duo become friends and become more comfortable with each other. Yuka showers Lily with a bunch of compliments, and this made the tiny angel smile wholeheartedly. Eventually, she receives a message from Akutsu and Yuka leaves later on. After she's gone, Lily stops to look at Yuka's parting gift and gets a little skeptical about the act she was putting up earlier. In the end, she forgives her and gets out of her bed to head home. On her way there, she runs into Akutsu who's been searching everywhere for her and realizes that he was there to report a demon he'd previously cited to her. She changes her countenance and tells Akutsu to get himself ready to take down a demon with her. When she's done changing into her attire, she gets her scythe and finds the demon under a bridge in town. There's a brief discussion between Lily and the monster demon dog before their great battle begins. Akutsu arrives on time, but then he sits this one out and hides his face, so the demon Lily is fighting doesn't see and recognize him. This is so that the demon doesn't start thinking Akutsu has betrayed them. Lily begins her fight with the demon and makes sure to gain the upper hand in the first half of the fight. When the demon gets tired of being chased around, he stops halfway through the fight and asks Lily why she's hell-bent on exercising him. Lily responds to his question and tells him it's because he's a demon who goes around attacking women in the city in broad daylight. At that point, Lily stays calm and waits for the demon to defend himself. To her surprise, however, the demon challenges her to defeat him first if she wishes to hear his answer to her question. With this, he produces a very potent, very purple demon-like miasma and amps up his transformative abilities so he can morph into possibly a greater version of himself. After watching him transform himself for a full minute, both Lily and Akutsu get disappointed at what the dog demon calls his final transformation. After his final transformation, the demon presents himself to be a beastman wearing a purple pinafore with a female spat as trousers. Normally, this would be pretty impressive if the stupid demon didn't reduce his power's potency by 50%. What's even worse is the fact that the demon was pretty proud of his new transformation, and even boasted of being much stronger than his normal self. Lily, on the other hand, waits for him to finish his yapping before punishing him for his stupidity. As punishment for putting up such an embarrassing show, Lily slams her death scythe on the wolf's head and knocks him out before leaving him on the floor to writhe in pain. With this, Akutsu comes out of his hiding place and pats the demon's back in an aid to comfort it. Surprised by Akutsu's act of kindness, the demon asks Akutsu if he's also an angel like Lily, but then again, he cools down and analyzes Akutsu's wavelengths before realizing that he's a demon just like him. With this, he confronts Akutsu for dealing with an angel and begins to brand Akutsu a traitor. Akutsu stutters and tries to explain himself, but then again, the demon isn't about to hear his flimsy reasons. He makes Akutsu know that he will only talk to him if he attacks Lily, his current master. At this point, Lily had about had it with both of them. So, she stops Akutsu from speaking too much and inches closer to the weird-looking demon to take him down. She also threatens to take down Akutsu as well if he tries to step into the fight and stop her from doing her job. With this, Akutsu tells them to stop resorting to violence so they calm down and talk it out first. To encourage them to do better, he does a rather embarrassing display of affection and does the love sign with his two hands. Sadly for him, both Lily and the demon weren't interested in his show as they kept on fighting their hearts out. They constantly spew out insults at Akutsu for thinking angels and demons can merge and let the power of love win the battle, seeing as his display of affection isn't getting them anyway. Akutsu decides to go all out and show both parties his type of love. To do this, he changes his clothes into an upgraded pinafore 
with spats for trousers. Then, he sings his heart out to Lily so she can feel them and reconsider exercising the demon. Once he's done, he throws Lily the mic to sing her response to him. Sadly for him, Lily didn't really care about his feelings one bit at all, so she blatantly insults Akutsu and throws the mic back at him for his response. Akutsu picks up the mic and cries into it for a little while, before sending it back to Lily. Over the next few minutes, both Akutsu and Lily put on a rather impressive display of back-and-forth conversations through music, and this made the stupid demon finally understand that Akutsu was doing it all for him. Just when Akutsu's about to embarrass himself one more time, the demon bends to his knees and collects the mic from Akutsu, to stop him from doing his mental health any further harm. With tears in his eyes, he begs Akutsu not to suffer for him anymore so they can be fine from then on. With this, both Akutsu and the demon hold each other and cry their hearts out. This bores the heck out of Lily, and she ends the show immediately. Shortly afterward, she holds the demon hostage and asks him to confess his sins to her before she rides him of his hate and bad behaviors. If anything, the demon tells her he has been in the city searching for a particular book ever since. Apparently, the demon had found a woman's clothing magazine magazine and had fallen in love with the spats he found on the women in the pictures and wanted some for himself. He's always been a loner with nobody to care for him at all, so finding happiness in such a material was more like heaven on earth for him. For the most part, he would constantly go through the magazines hoping to find something he could hang on to in the meantime. So, to satisfy his urge to find himself some spats, the demon would sometimes attack women wearing leggings thinking they were in spats and steal the leggings from them. At this point, Lily stops him from talking and uses her powers to take his demon thoughts away from him. In his final moments of life, the demon thanks Akutsu for showing his care and love back then when nobody wanted to help him at all. Akutsu tries to explain to him that he did it for himself, but then again, it's too late for him. In just a split second, Akutsu finds the demon already transformed into a little cute cat. Lily takes the cat's picture and sends it to the president of the Dog and Cat Rescue Volunteer Organization, Kearney San. In just a few minutes, Kearney shows up with her van and picks up the cute cat to add to her pack of little animal pets. After doing the exchange, Akutsu asks her to tell him what she did to the demon. To his surprise, Lily tells him that she only took away the demon's intent to kill and sealed them all away. Surprised, Akutsu asked her for some clarifications, and from what Lily told him, he realized that she never had the intention to take down the demon in the first place. Akutsu calls bullshit and asks her to tell him why she was holding the scythe earlier. Lily bursts his bubble and tells him she wasn't planning on hitting the demon with the scythe, and that she did all those just to appear strong to the demon and take it down when she sees fit. Akutsu then asks her about the demon she was fighting at the beginning, and Lily tells him she did the same thing to the demon and transformed him into a cute little puppy before giving him to the dog and cat rescue. As proof, she shows Akutsu the picture she took with the puppy back then, and this sends chills down Akutsu's spine. With this, Lily steps back and continues going on her way. Akutsu, on the other hand, stands frozen in place, wondering why Lily would pretend to be a real angel towards him. Lily, who didn't quite understand Akutsu at the time, looks back and invites him for some lunch with her so she can thank him for helping her save another demon in real time. Akutsu keeps on staring at her until Lily notices what is wrong and asks him what the matter is. To her surprise, Akutsu tells her just how surprised he is to know that she's kind-hearted. Ever since he was younger, he's been made to hate angels as he was taught that they're the devil in disguise. Lily gets a little funky and chastises Akutsu for actually thinking she was a stuck-up boss lady in the first place. To avoid getting into an embarrassing situation, she turns her back on Akutsu and urges him to follow her to the cafe nearby. On the way there, she gets a little tingling sensation in her belly and wonders why Akutsu's words were affecting her so much. Eventually, she keeps her act up and ends the day in one piece. That day, Akutsu gets into a very awkward daydream about himself and his crush, Lily, kissing and doing adult things in bed. He suddenly wakes up to reality to find his homeroom teacher standing close to him, ready to smack him in the head for dozing off in class. After getting his attention, the teacher slams his head and leaves him with a pretty large bump in his head. Akutsu recounts his ordeal with Lily and considers falling in love with the cute Lily. That night, he gets a visit from the department head from hell, his former home, Liz, and hesitantly invites her into the house. Akutsu complains about her barging in on his space without informing him, but then again, Liz shows him the email she sent to him before her arrival, and chastises him a little for not checking his mail earlier. With that out of the way, Liz moves on to show off her school uniform outfit to Akutsu so she can get a reaction from him. Akutsu, who's pretty unimpressed by her uniform, asks her why she wore it to his place and watches her drink his special tea. Following that, Liz asks him about his mission on Earth, 
and Akutsu gives that another thought before deciding on what to tell his department head. Eventually, he tells her the truth and mentions that he's not been able to find someone yet. Liz asks again to confirm if he's truly not finding anybody else. Akutsu tells her about Lily, but then again, he makes her know that he's not making good headway with her at all. Liz tells him to take his time, but not to forget that they don't have the luxury of time at all. Akutsu sighs in relief and assures her he's gonna get the job done. After that, Liz removed her blazer and went to the changing room to change into her nightie so she could stay over at Akutsu's place. While she's at it, Akutsu's head thinks of several things that could either be very good or very wrong in the bedroom that night. Thankfully, Liz returns with her sleeping bag on and sleeps very close to Akutsu. The very next morning, Akutsu wakes up early as he isn't able to sleep at all due to Liz's incessant sleep talking. Liz wakes up shortly and invites him for a training regimen after breakfast. Akutsu, who's a little confused, soon gets what she is talking about. In just a few hours, Liz has him meet several strangers in the street and talk to them so he can get their contact. After trying and failing, a few times, Liz calls him back and gives him a few pointers on how to get his affairs in order so he can ask out the proper people for the proper reasons. Akutsu gets very calm next time and manages to get himself acquainted with a dog lady after lying about his missing dog to her and making her go on an impossible dog hunt for a dog that never existed. Liz congratulates him for getting the job done and tells him to always find every woman's way and lie his way, if possible into their hearts. Akutsu tries his luck one more time and gets unfortunate enough to run into Yuka. He calls her and tries to talk her into being his close friend, but then again, Yuka is already way ahead of him and even went as far as asking him out that instant. Akutsu takes her to a bar and gets some orange juice for their enjoyment. While he's at it, Akutsu depends on Liz to give him pointers on how to relate with the humans in front of him. Eventually, Liz loses contact with him and continues to do her thing. In the meantime, Lily wakes up pretty late with a cold, sending her body back to the Ice Age. As she moves around her house, she slowly loses control of her powers, and this makes her go a little gaga. Meanwhile, Yuka gets very blunt and asks Akutsu about his crush on Lily. Akutsu tried so hard to keep her off the question, but then failed woefully. In the end, he he succumbs to defeat and asks about her relationship with Hirota. Yuka looks glum and tells Akutsu that she isn't in the best of spots with him at the moment, as she's almost convinced that Hirota doesn't like her that much. He then moves on to talk about some quote from ancient Rome which makes her reason with him for a while. Yuka takes Akutsu in as her friend that day and gives him enough green light to get to the next stage of the plan. Akutsu checks in on Liz, who tells him to move things to the next level by inviting her to the park that night so he can get some alone time with her. Akutsu initially thinks of him being considered a creep earlier and lets Liz know about it. Liz, however, threatens to pull off his funding and write some bad things in her evaluation of him. To prevent that, Akutsu damns the consequences and asks Yuka out on a date in the park at night. Around that time, Lily's cold was already getting out of hand. She loses control over the collar and causes Akutsu to behave weirdly in the bar. By nightfall, Akutsu gets his time alone with Yuka, but unfortunately for her, it doesn't last long. Yuka gets too weird about things and rushes back home when it gets too dark for her to manage. After she's gone, Liz shows up and recounts the weird things he did at the bar with the bartender and tells him not to show his sexual preferences in front of another mission. Besides that, Liz believes Akutsu will still finish his mission in one piece, so she disappears to her place in hell and leaves Akutsu alone to get on with his mission and finish it before they all run out of time. The following day, Lily is seen checking herself out in the mirror one more time before heading out to school. She praises herself over how cute she is and hopes the cuteness is enough for someone like Akutsu to fall head over heels in love with her. She knows things will be much better for her if that is the case. With this, she gets to school with streaks of confidence beaming down her face. During their first period, Lily gets the shock of her life when she finds Akutsu to be more dazzling than ever. Frustrated, several thoughts stroll through her head as she thinks of possible ways to counter Akutsu's dazzliness and beat him in the game of cuteness. To do this, she gets into her thoughts and starts thinking about the last time Akutsu was that cute to her so she can also remember how she got to counter his cuteness back then. Sadly, Akutsu doesn't give her time to think that far as he touches her cheek with his finger to get her attention. Lily shrinks in fear when she realizes that Akutsu is challenging her. She calls him a fool for trying to challenge an angel and then brings up her alter ego, which is a catman to fight Akutsu's alter ego, who is a dogman in a deadly game of boxing. Scared to fold up, Lily keeps her cool and tries to threaten Akutsu with the collar she put around his neck. To her surprise, 
Akutsu scoffs at her remarks and sees them as nothing. At this point, Lily couldn't take it anymore. What is different about him now? Why is he so calm and not responding to her cuteness tactics? To find answers to those questions, Lily decides to keep trying her best, hoping to get Akutsu's secret along the way. After the first period, Lily finds Akutsu strolling in the school's hallway. Before calling him or anything, she sticks to her cute pose. Once she's got that covered, she calls Akutsu and runs to him in a very subtle manner, in hopes that he sees her and folds in defeat. At this point, Lily's alter ego, the Catman, was already inside the boxing ring in the other dimension, waiting for the perfect opening to take down Akutsu's dog man, Joe, who was just standing there calmly. After the bell kick starts at the beginning of the matchup, Lily's cat guy rushes straight to Joe to land his first and fatal punch on him. In reality, this punch could be translated directly to be the cutesy act Lily was trying to pull on Akutsu in the hallway. To their surprise, Akutsu wasn't affected by such flimsy tactics. To avoid dying from the embarrassment, Lily chuckles shyly and runs away from the new and improved Akutsu. Then, she stops to think about what went wrong. Isn't she as cute as before? What could be wrong with her new tactic? Just as she's about to sabotage her cuteness, two random students catch up to her and say hi to her. Lily responds to them with her cutesy look and melts their hearts. This gives Lily the necessary confidence boost she needs to go again. This time, she purposely unties her hair and holds it up. Then, she gets back to Akutsu and calls him with a cute look on her face, hoping he'd look back and get back under her spell. Again, Akutsu's guy, Joe, dodges every hit aimed at him and makes a nonchalant remark. At this point, Lily became desperate to get Akutsu's attention. Throughout that day in school, she would purposely get in front of Akutsu and perform cutesy acts in front of him, just so he could get back under her wing. Akutsu, the Sigma male, ain't got no time for them bees. As such, Lily only got more frustrated as time went on. Her cat guy, Thiam, in the alternate universe, keeps trying to land a punch on Akutsu's guy, Joe. But then again, Joe wasn't folding to any of his punches at all. Akutsu waits till she's at her lowest before striking her where it hurts the most. When his time comes, he calls Lily's name softly and tells her about his likeness to her ponytail. Lily's heart melts in place and sends Thiam, her alter ego, cat guy, at a loss for words. Joe. Akutsu's alter ego, dog guy, does a sharp feint to the right and appears under Thiam to give him an uppercut. But thankfully, the bell rings that round to be over. Lily had just dodged a heavy blow from Akutsu, and she was grateful to avoid getting hit. As for Akutsu, he kept his cool and lured Lily to the staircase leading to the lower floor of the school. Lily, who didn't know any better, followed suit and waited for him to get a floor lower than her. Then, she jumps off the walls of the school and lunges at the unsuspecting Akutsu. She plans to do a rom-com mount to make sure Akutsu catches her in his arms and gets overwhelmed by her cuteness as she folds in them. Too bad Akutsu already saw that coming. So, he pretended to not know anything and waited for Lily to do her thing. Lily lunges herself high up in the air and waits for Akutsu to catch her. Around that time in the alternate universe, Thiam also lunges at Joe to take him down. Just when they thought they had the game, Akutsu shocks Lily and catches her rom-com style. By this time, Lily fell too deep for our Sigma male. Joe also punches Thiam down and knocks him out that instant. Lily quickly removes herself from Akutsu's arms and pretends to be fine, but then again, Akutsu doesn't believe her as he wants her to get to the nurse's office first. During her visit there, Akutsu stays outside praising himself for keeping his cool and making sure Lily falls under his charm. He thanks his master, Liz, for teaching him the ropes around getting women, but then wishes she'd never come to him anymore. Little did Akutsu know that Liz was already trying out several disguises in her office in hell, as she was preparing to come to pay him a visit on Earth. After she visits the nurse's office, Lily gets out of there and joins Akutsu on the bench, outside. Akutsu tries to woo her one more time by picking up the water bottle next to him, and taking a drink from it. He then makes a kind gesture and gives Lily the bottle to drink. As he goes on to get more water, he stops to check up on the beautiful Lily fondling the water bottle. Lily notices this and tells him that drinking the water feels like having an indirect kiss with him. Completely expecting him to fold, Lily gets the shock of her life when Akutsu embarrasses her for saying such immoral stuff. Lily, who didn't expect such a reaction from him, gets very shy and then looks closely to see the smug look on Akutsu's face. After realizing that she was playing, she decides to take things to the extreme. She comes up with a flimsy plan to get herself in his head. To do this, she gets her fighter, Thiam, back to normal in the alternate universe and tries to do a little trick to flip the bottle in the air and then rip it apart with her powers before letting the water fall on her hair. With this, she planned to get Akutsu to be taken aback and interested in her wet body. Little did she know that Akutsu wasn't even getting hard for that. Our Sigma dude gets up like the perfect gentleman, does a little display, removes his blazer, and wraps it all around Lily, all in one motion. This time, Thiam gets defeated by Joe, 
and Lily is left with nothing but a wet body and a bruised ego. Yuka finds Lily facing down at her desk and walks up to her, thinking she is sick or something. When she's able to talk, Lily asks Yuka to tell her how to destroy a boy's heart. Surprised, Yuka racks her evil brain and comes up with an undisclosed plan. After relaying the plan to Lily, she leaves the classroom. On her way back home that evening, Lily makes Akutsu follow her to the grocery store to get a few ingredients to make a nice dinner. On their way back to her place, Akutsu asks her a few questions to get her true intentions behind the weird actions she's been taking that day. Lily shyly tells him they're both going over to her place so she can treat him to a nice dinner and thank him for being there for her and working hard to make her achieve her goals. She makes a cute gesture that almost makes Akutsu break character but as expected, our Sigma isn't up for anything like that. Upon arriving at her apartment, Akutsu's back nearly breaks from how high her house was. He felt a little intimidated about the entire structure, as it was huge compared to the minuscule apartment he was staying at. After settling in her home, Akutsu waits for Lily to get changed into Mufti. Minutes later, she shows up in a very alluring pink apron, which makes Akutsu think she was naked. At that point, his demon horn was already sticking out of his head, as he thought she was fully naked. To his surprise though, Lily turns her back and he realizes that she is fully dressed. Lily finishes making her pasta dish and serves it to Akutsu, who was fidgeting at the proper dish he was being served. Lily leaves him to eat the dish she made for him and goes back inside. Akutsu takes a bite of the pasta dish and gets flabbergasted by how delicious the whole thing tastes. Lily, who was eavesdropping on the entire thing earlier, pops her head out of the kitchen counter and teases Akutsu for enjoying her dish. In a few minutes, she brings brings what she calls the main course, and urges Akutsu to eat to his heart's content. Akutsu notices her love for pasta and asks her about it. To him, it was a little weird for a lady to eat too much pasta like a guy. Lily begs to differ, and then asks him what his favorite food is. To her surprise, Akutsu tells her it's bell peppers. He then moves on to explain the various nutritional properties of bell peppers, and this makes Lily burst out in laughter over his absurd taste in food. In the end, Akutsu succumbs to her laughter and takes it as her enjoying his company. After witnessing the friendliness develop between the two in the real world, Joe and Thiem, both Akutsu and Lily's dog and cat guys in the alternate world, stop their fight and become friends afterward. After dinner, Lily takes out a romance movie for them to watch. Akutsu condemns that movie and prefers an action movie instead. Lily collects the disc from him, telling him she already watched the movie and hated it because it had too many bugs. At this point, Akutsu was already getting fond of his new love interest, and the two of them engage each other in a power struggle over the movie they both get to watch. At this point, Joe and Thiem were just watching the weird drama playing out on their TV. Eventually, the two of them decide on a romance movie to watch, and Akutsu watches it patiently. He gets a little tired of the drama in the movie, and looks beside himself to check up on Lily. He finds her getting too engrossed in the movie, and thinks about what could go wrong. Just then, it clicks in his head, and he starts praying, a sex scene doesn't pop up on the screen. To his dismay, a sex scene pops up that instant, and things get very intense between the actor and the actress. Things get so hot and steamy between them that Akutsu's horn pops out of his head. After displaying a little madness, Akutsu notices how hot Lily looks. He fixes his gaze on Lily's soft lips, and begins thinking of vulgar things. Lily also catches his gaze, and the two of them have a moment. They immediately look away, and give each other excuses. Lily gets up at one point to get them drinks and trips on her feet. In a bid to help her, Akutsu falls on top of her, and somehow manages to interlock his body with hers. Just then, they lock onto each other for real now, and both Akutsu and Lily are left with nothing more to do or say. Akutsu keeps asking Lily why she isn't doing anything to prevent him from doing such. Then, he gets the idea that Lily must also want the D. So, Akutsu lets his body loose as he gently caresses Lily's hair before going for the kiss. Just as his lips are about to touch hers, Lily's phone alarm rings, and they stop their moment. Akutsu gets up from Lily's body, and lets her stop her alarm on her phone. It's already getting late, and Akutsu feels like it's time to go. After he's gone, Lily gives her a special report, and starts thinking about her moment with Akutsu like crazy. She felt a little different this time, and couldn't get her mind off Akutsu. Around that time, Akutsu also felt the same thing and spent a greater part of his walk thinking about what could have happened. Eventually, both of them realize that they've fallen for each other. This is a problem, especially because both of them are two sides of a coin. 